What's up everybody, welcome to MyPixel. As always, it's awesome to have you here. Today, we're going to add a little more variety to our enemies' behavior to make them different from one another. We'll do that by adding a little more code and by taking advantage of Godot's exported variables feature. So let's jump right into it. Before we get started, let's go ahead and take a look at our current game to see what we're working with. We'll run our game real quickly. Okay, we can hit some of these guys like we always could before. All of them go down pretty easily. One fireball. All right, so we'll start it. We'll run the game again just so we can watch these guys bounce back and forth a little bit. But so from this, we can see that all of our enemies right here, they're all moving at the same speed. And from just a little bit earlier, we see that all of them have the same HP. Well, sort of. Because all of them die after being hit only once, it's pretty much like they have the same HP. Now that being said, why don't we go ahead and change that? We'll make some of them move at different speeds, and we'll also make certain other ones able to take more hits before dying. First, we'll start off by adjusting the speeds. So we get out of our game here, and then let's get into our enemy script. Currently, all the enemies move at the same speed because they're all instances of the same enemy scene. Being instances of the same enemy scene means that they use the same script for all their actions and characteristics, such as this speed that we have set here in the constant. Now let's say we wanted to use this script to modify just the speed of maybe, if we take a look back here, maybe this one enemy up on the platform. In that case, we'd have to get into our script and we'd have to identify this specific instance of the enemy somehow. We see here, actually let me, sorry, jump back in here. We see here that the enemy on the platform, that enemy's name, the uh, node name or the object name is enemy. So someplace inside of our script, we'd have to say something like, if the enemy's name is enemy, then we want to change its speed to 60. Now, while you could do something like that, and that would work, you probably wouldn't want to do that for more than a few enemies. Imagine if you wanted to change the speed on a hundred different enemies. That would be a crazy amount of code all packed into this one same script with only just a fraction of that code being applicable to any one enemy. Now, I could go into the many additional reasons that you shouldn't go ahead and do it like this, but Suffice it to say that it would just be a bad solution that doesn't scale well. So instead, we're going to use exported variables for the enemy's speed that we can change per instance in the inspector. I'll show you what I mean. Inside the enemy script, we're going to go ahead and change our speed here, or our uh, speed code. We're going to change this to the following. We're going to get rid of constant. We're going to say export int speed, or excuse me, var. So export int var speed equals 30. And so we just changed a little bit in the front here. Now, what exactly did we do here? Well, with export int, we told Godot that we want this variable to be an integer that we can edit in the inspector. So if we look down here in the inspector now, right, the inspector tab, we can see that we have a new script variable section, right, with a label speed or a variable speed and its initial value of 30 that we have set in here. Now we can go ahead and set this speed variable on all the different instances. So if we go back into our stage one scene, let's uh, just make sure we got the right one here, right? We got all our enemies. So we said we wanted to modify the speed of the enemy on the platform. So if we go into enemy here, we can see there's a script variable section still. We can go ahead and we can modify this. So how about we go and change this guy up on the platform? Maybe he'll have a speed of 60. Let's try that. Okay. And then for enemy two here, this little guy down here, let's give him a speed of 10. Right, the difference from 60 to 10 is pretty big, so it should be pretty obvious when we run our game what we've done. Let's go ahead and run our game. All right, so I think you all noticed the difference, right? 
Now we see that the enemy on this platform runs really fast and this enemy on the ground is really pretty slow. So that worked out great. Now that we know how to do that, let's go ahead and use the same concept with the export variables with a little additional code to give our enemies some different HP values. For that, we'll just jump right back into our enemy script. Before we get into adjusting the HP, let's go ahead and fix our speed variable and change this to lowercase. Right, this is going to be just a, you don't have to do it, but it's to keep it consistent and to bring us back in line with Godot's code style guidelines. Right, so we have constants all, all up here. When they were constants, they were all capitalized. All of our variables are lowercase. Since we changed this to a variable now, we want this to be lowercase also. So we'll change speed capital speed into lowercase speed. And because we did that, code is case sensitive. So we need to go ahead and replace our old speed with the little one. And then every time after you go ahead and do this, it's a good idea just to run your game. Okay, everything's acting as it should. That's good. Actually, they're all moving back at 30 now, as you can see, because we changed the variable. So uh, maybe we can go back in here. Change this to 60. Change this back to 10. So that we're on the same playing field we were a moment ago. We'll run it. We got 60 and 10. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Back into our enemy script. Now on to getting the enemy their different HPs. Um, here we go. Okay. So, well, since this is not constant anymore, let's go ahead and we'll just move it down here next, next to the VARs. Okay. Or the <laughs> variables, whatever you want to call it. All right. So we're going to add this in here. We're going to make a new exported variable for HP. And we're just going to set that equal to 1. Okay. Now we go down here. Where are we? Okay, under the dead function. We're going to add some code in here. So we'll say... Basically, okay, so this dead function, we could name it something else. We're just going to keep it like this for now. It's easy. It's already here. But this dead function gets activated when the fireball hits the enemy. If you remember, we have in our fireball, right, when the um, area 2D detects an overlap or something enters the fireball area 2D, if it's an enemy, it says run the enemy's dead function. And then that's how this runs. So we're going to say, well, instead of just killing off the player, we're going to say we're going to reduce the enemy's HP. So we'll say HP minus equals, whoops, minus equals. Um, should we do minus equals or should we just do HP minus one? It, it's the same thing, but okay, let's just do HP equals HP minus one for, um, you know, maybe we've still got some beginners out there who don't understand the other pattern. Um, I'll just go into it real quickly. HP equals HP minus one is the equivalent of HP minus equals one. You could type this out either way. They mean exactly the same thing. If you're not used to seeing this, this might look confusing. So I'm just going to leave it like this as is. Uh, sooner or later, as we move further on in the series, we're going to stop doing it this long way and do it the short way. But uh, yeah, just just for now, for today, let, let's go ahead and just rock the HP equals HP minus one. That'll be fine. Okay, so when we get hit by the fireball, we're going to reduce our HP by one. Now we're going to say if HP is less than or equal to zero. Um, at this point, it would never go less than zero. We do a check before that, but maybe we're going to reduce HP by two in the future. Who knows? It's good to program in like this fail safe, this uh, less than or equals, just in case you do something unexpected. So we're going to say if HP is less than or equal to zero, and then we're going to indent all of this. Because if the HP is zero or less, then the enemy should be dead. 
right? And all of this code is what makes the enemy die. And then that's going to do it for our code. If we were to run this right now, we'd see that we have exactly the same behavior as we did before. Everything effectively just has one HP or now it has an actual HP stat, but it's the same thing as before. They all die after they get hit, hit only once. But if we jump back into the stage one scene, get into here, take a look at our enemies. Okay, so here's our enemy on the top. Let's just say that he's pretty fast. Usually the fast guy is a little bit weaker. So let's give him an HP of two. Okay. And then let's just pretend this guy down here, he's he's kind of slow, so he's really buffed out and strong, so maybe he's got extra HP. Let's give him an HP of 5. Right, so we've got 2 for the guy on the top and 5 for the guy on the bottom. So then we can run the game and see if it works. Okay, that guy up there, he's pretty fast. Right, which one's my jump? Okay, there it is. Okay, hit him once. And right, that's 1. Two. All right. Perfect. He goes down, right? Two HP. And this guy on the bottom. Let's not get myself killed. One, two, three, four, five. And he goes down. All right. So works really good. So just like that, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and adjust the HPs of any of the other enemies on the screen. You just got to modify it in here and you're good to go. Today, we gave our enemies a little more personality and variety. We got to use exported variables, which allowed us to customize individual instances of enemy scenes while also keeping our code neat and clean. So that'll do it for today, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I really hope you found this helpful. If you liked today's video, please give it a like and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. As always, the sprites, source code, and everything else that I've used in this tutorial today is available on my Patreon page. So if you want to check that out and also support the channel, the link will be in the description. And with that, we're going to call it a day. So thanks again to everybody for watching, and I'll see you in the next one real soon. Take it easy.